Hey, this is John and the Gilman. I'm about to start the show, and I just want to remind you, it's almost Christmas. I mean, it's not really Thanksgiving yet, but it's almost Christmas, and I can't think of a better stocking stuffer than Sheep No More, The Art of Awareness and Attack Survival. And if you really want to stuff it, go get the two workbooks that go with it, the Threat Assessment and Defense Assessment Workbook. And for the children, don't forget them and their stockings. Get The Adventures of Team Little Bigs, a parent's book for children. It's a book of pictures that include lessons on safety, awareness, and communication. And you, the parent or the teacher, can go and download the lesson plans at teamlittlebigs.com. It's great for children who aren't quite old enough to understand that stuff so you can teach them through the pictures and also learning disabled children as well. All the entire awareness package for your family, Sheep No More, The Art of Awareness, and Attack Survival. It's two workbooks, the Threat Assessment and Defense Assessment Workbook, and the Adventures of Team Little Bigs, a parent's book for children. Great for Christmas under the tree, great for stocking stuffers, and if you really want to tick off Cuomo in New York or Gavin Newsom in California or anywhere else they have these ridiculous socialist ideas of how many people you should have at your home over the holidays, Go buy 15 stockings and stuff them full of these books and invite your family over. Do it. Let's start the show. The truth has arrived. My name is Jonathan Gillum, and this is The Experts. And welcome back to another episode of The Experts. This is where the truth exists. It, it hasn't just arrived. This is where it exists on this podcast. And heaven knows we need it right now. So, we're going to talk about some interesting things today. Let's just start with the fact that, you know, I go over to CNN, I go to Drudge, right? They're still talking about Trump. Trump is still definitely the main thing that these leftist news organizations uh, talk about. But now COVID is really taking over. And I don't, I don't know if you notice this. I'm sure you do notice this, but COVID becomes a major thing whenever they need the people controlled or whenever something is going on with Trump, you can always guarantee like, uh, if, if they're wanting to, if, if something is going good with Trump, this is the way it's been all year. And I talked to, if you missed yesterday's show, you should really listen to that show because I explain a lot of stuff about the totality of the circumstances. But w when you look at how they use COVID and the fear of COVID, they, they really amp that up whenever they are trying to control. I mean, just look at the fact that it, it's, it's Thanksgiving this week and the restrictions are out of control. You didn't hear any of these restrictions when the riots were occurring. You didn't hear any of these restrictions when the, when the, the, the protests, you want to call them protests. I mean, when they weren't tearing stuff up, but hundreds of thousands of people, of idiots, we're marching down the street for uh, the Marxist Black Lives Matter group. Notice they ne never marching in the inner city and and trying to meet with police and fix anything or get you know gang members gone in the inner city and seeing if that helped anything. You never saw any of that stuff. They were marching in the city centers and the places where people who work for a living and where the crime was not high. That's where they go and march. That's, these people are freaking morons. They don't change anything. And these Democrat mayors and governors are completely megalomaniac. And they only increase the this all the different rules about COVID. They only increase those rules when they are trying when something arises that they need to tamp down. I mean, I, listen, again, I say this all the time. I had COVID. I know people who died from COVID. But I, I can't tell you where it started. I can't tell you how it got here. It's very mysterious how it happened in an election year and how it, it is played out, as I said yesterday. I'm not going to rehash it again today. 
but w- what we can still see is that right around and Thanksgiving of all holidays, right? I'm sure they're going to bash on Christmas because it has to do with Christ. Sorry, everybody. Well, I'm not sorry. Sorry, I'm not sorry. But Thanksgiving is all about exactly what it says, giving thanks. Thanks for the harvest. I mean, there's different interpretations. Of course, there's different interpretations now of how Thanksgiving began and where it began in the United States. But regardless of, you know, what historian or person says this or that, and they try to rewrite the books now, everything. The fact is, it's a Christian holiday. It's based on uh, giving thanks to God for the bounty and the harvest. And it is a, I would, I would even say next to July 4th, we're f- celebrating the country and the, and the prosperity of the country and giving thanks of things in your family. And, and they go after these holidays. They want to say it's a super spreader or this or that, or we'll go out of control and everybody's going to die. Listen, nothing has matched up with the nursing homes and the mandates by Democrat mayors and governors. Nothing else has added up to that with this virus. I mean, look at now. They're saying that all the, you know, that the death rate is the highest it's been since April. Well, March, April, May, April was the middle of the death spiral caused by these governors and mayors by putting COVID positive patients into these elderly clinics. And guess, guess what, guess what's occurring right now? Can you, can you guess? Uh, they're saying U S reported more than 2,100 deaths in a single day, but they're also saying that, uh, COVID has broken out, and I believe it's a Philadelphia, it's in Pennsylvania, in a nursing home. Now, I wonder if we look at the other nursing homes. Plus, the fact is, we don't even know anymore what death is actually occurring. I I was very skeptical, I'll be honest with you, when, you know, after I had it and all these uh, doctors are coming out and saying that, you know, they're being paid to do this or that. But it was always this weirdo doctor. You never see like back then, you never, you know, this is back then, this is a couple months ago. You didn't see the practical doctors coming out. I know everybody's going to say that, no, well, there were those two guys in Nevada, but it, those two guys to me were not credible. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. I mean, what they said, I guess, could have added up at, at that point when they said it. And if you don't know these two doctors, I'm sure you do. The video went all over the place, got blocked everywhere, got, went right back all over the place, got blocked everywhere. The thing was about those two doctors is that they were the most smug individuals I've ever seen. It just, the ego in those two guys instantly killed it for me. And I just wanted other doctors to come out and say that this is a fact that they've seen these people getting paid. I've talked to people, a great indicator is around Raleigh, North Carolina, because that is like Silicon Valley for the health industry and health technology. And the stories I've heard from people from there that talk about the reality of the money being paid to hospitals where people are hospitalized for COVID or where a COVID death occurs. It's real. And the statistics, we we don't even know what the reality is with people coming in. I mean, listen, hospitalizations are up. I could say that about anything. We don't know why hospitalizations are up. I talked to somebody in Florida earlier this year. He went, he, he's a traveling nurse and he went down to a certain place in Florida and he said, this is he said, this is the reality of what's going on in Florida. And I've heard this from other, other traveling nurses who are kind of responding to uh, these types of things and in, in these hot spots. They say people get the sniffles and I just paused a minute ago so I could sneeze. There's people who are literally going to the hospital because they got the sniffles or because they sneeze and then they go in there and they get hospitalized for, I mean, we don't even know why. Oh, you know, we better put you in here. And then they get paid this money, these hospitals. I mean, uh, listen, I, I, every show, it seems like I come on here and talk like I'm a conspiracy theorist and it's, it's literally driving me crazy because I'm not. I'm a realist and I look at the facts 
And the facts are that these hospitals are being paid money to say that people are COVID and they're being paid for COVID deaths. So when people die or when people check in, oh, I think I, I think I may have COVID. What do you have? Oh, I have a fever. Okay. Oh, I have a cough. Well, they automatically list it as COVID and then they go test it and who and it could be something totally different. The whole thing's a scam. And the people that do get it, the people that do get it, I know several people who've had it over the past month, quite a few, almost a dozen people that I know of. All of them had it for three days and then it just dwindled away. It's way weaker than it was when I got it back in April. It was a much stronger virus then. We can't, we can't under, we can't listen to what the CD says, CDC says, uh, other doctors, doctors on TV, doctors who swear an oath, go on TV and lie, or they make things way worse. We have politicians that are, they just make this stuff up as they go along and you could see it in their eyes. Listen, I'm a big proponent of, of when I see people, cause I've been in media and I can tell when people are entertaining versus when they are telling the truth. And I see entertainment everywhere where they are just manipulating news and it's either opinion that they're not qualified to make or they're trying to get famous or they're trying to grift or they're trying to be powerful. Now, what's interesting uh, as far as far as grifters go, I, I mentioned some people yesterday uh, about um, these grifters that are going around trying to make money, I and mean, they have been over the past couple of years about support Trump, support Trump, this, walk away from this, do this, clean up trash. All the while, it's changed nothing. They're about, as, they're about as successful of changing things as the left is when it comes to, to fixing the problem between uh, cops and uh, black people in the inner city. They don't do anything. They just put money in their pockets. The grifters on the right are just as bad as is uh, Reverend Al Sharpton on the left. They just make money off of stuff. And when you look at the doctors that are grifting off of COVID, when you look at the governors and the mayors who are grifting for power off of COVID, I mean, do, again, do you not see, I hope you do, see the totality of the circumstances, which I explained yesterday, when you look at the whole thing, the big picture, and, and actually evidence or circumstantial evidence or analysis of behavior just jumps right out. Everybody's grifting these days. Look, there's a difference between people that show up with heart and soul and, and they want to help other people. I don't even mind if some of those people get donations and make money so that they can continue to do that. They show up with a plan. They say, this is our plan. We need, we need your help. Let's save the country. But most people don't do that. They just show up and they, they, they're, they're popular. They throw a rally. People show up. There's no plan of action. They just get up there and give speeches like they're Winston Churchill. And they're not. They're just weirdos, most of them. You meet these people in, in person, they're weird. The people who were behind the scenes that run this stuff are weird. And they're all banking. You go look at doctors. You go look at something, somebody like Dr. Wally Grand or his incredible wife. And Dr. Grand is, you know, he passed. He was one of my mentors. His incredible wife. You, you look at uh, everybody around the Grand family is, is super successful. Many doctors, psychologists, writers, unbelievable group of people. One of the greatest things in my life I, I was ever gifted with by God was getting to know the grand family and all their friends. And when you meet these people, you, you just want to be around them. And the stuff that they say is legitimate because they're not looking for power or fame. They're just legitimately knowledgeable. But when you look at these doctors and you look at uh, uh, the, the grifters that are trying to make money off of Trump and you look at all these, these, these power hungry uh, governors and mayors, that are grifting for power, uh, that, that word is like, that is really the word of 2020, the grift. 
grifting, making money off of a cause. And when you see these doctors on television or you see them in person, there's just, there's just bullshit in their eyes. It's just lies. They look like Joe Biden who's sitting up there talking about, I mean, uh, that guy, I just can't wrap my mind around how people have gravitated and you look at the news reports and they're just, I mean, besides grift, bullshit is the other word. It's just bullshit everywhere. Sorry, I don't, I don't curse a lot, but I mean, this is ridiculous. And that really does just, just explains it well, just enough force without cursing too bad. It just puts it right out there. I mean, listen, look at, you want to talk about power hungry grifters. Okay. Bloomberg reports that New York city will have COVID checkpoints at key bridges and crossings. I'm going to read. Read part of this. It's ridiculous. New York City will have vehicle checkpoints at key bridges and crossings and will strictly enforce the travel quarantine, Sheriff Joseph Facito said. Wow, what a, what an incredible sheriff. Enforcing unconstitutional laws like a like one of Hitler's henchmen. This way you gotta be careful when you elect sheriffs. The sheriff's office will conduct spot checks. When out-of-state buses drop off riders at the curb, test and tracing teams will be on the ground to direct. Listen to this, okay? Listen to this statement from the sheriff. Test and tracing teams will be on the ground to direct individuals to test sites and provide education on quarantine, he says. That sounds like something that would have happened in Russia or socialist Poland. Well, we're going to, we're going to stop you. We're going to do a spot check. And then if we feel like you need to be reeducated, we're going to send you over here because you're not adult enough to make decisions on your own. And you're not adult enough to accept the consequences that the, the government has to set you to the side and reeducate you re on the side of the street. What do you think's coming next? It goes on to say the 14-day quarantine mandates that travelers quarantine or test out. Violators of self-quarantines will be, will be enforced and may carry fines of $1,000 to $2,000 according to the mayor's office. They'll also enforce the, the completion of travel forms at airports, Penn Station, and Port Authority bus terminal. terminal. There will be self-test site teams on site. What's a self-test? Is that where you stick the thing up your own nose? The, the, folks, this stuff should scare you. It should scare you because throughout the entire year, there's never real been, really been any real proof of what's actually killing people. There's no real proof. I mean, yes, let me let me back that up. There, There's proof that COVID does kill. There's no doubt about it. But we don't know what the numbers are. We don't know... What the re, how how is President Trump and other people? I know they have this miracle drug. You know wh why was the media never talking about that? Why do you never hear Fauci talking about how we need to push that? What the what does Fauci even do besides piss everybody off? Talk about a complete failure of a leader. Fauci, believe you know whether you like it or not, or whether you agree with it or not, is held the highest position. In as far as a doctor goes, when it comes to the to viral infections, totally worthless, absolutely worthless, D could not lead us anybody out of a paper bag. Nobody wants to follow Fauci. <clears throat> the left even deserts him at times, but he really has informed no one. Doctor Fauci never said anything that had look. This is the proof. I listen. I hope you're like me in this point where you just don't take anything anyone says. I mean, I've done that for a long time, having been an investigator uh, and, and seen the reality of lies and how they can be used. But I don't trust any of these people. I don't trust them. You never hear 
or see a breakdown. You see uh, people go and make documentaries and put them on YouTube. I don't know who those people are. Why wasn't Fauci in the government, even President Trump? Worse, I, I, will, I will tell you, I'm a huge Trump supporter. But he, he had the worst COVID briefings out of everybody. Well, I mean, they were all bad. I mean, was, I can't say he was worse than, than Cuomo or de Blasio, but listen, they're all bad. None of them answered anything. I think it's the president's greatest failure. He can say whatever he wants about, you know, solve this or did that. But the fact is, no one was informed. And that's why people sit back and either pissed when something is true and they say, I'm not going to believe that. Or people are just believing anything that they tell them. Because they have crea they've created an, a, an atmosphere of you either believe what we tell you or, or, you're, or you're a radical. And if you believe what we tell you, you got to believe it all. But yet the same people are telling you one thing one, one day, another thing the next. They're, they're telling you, you know, that you, what you can do inside your own home with your family. It, it's just, I mean, I read these, it's, a, it's like we're living, well, no, it's not like we're living in a socialist country. It's like we're living in, it's not like we are, we're living in the beginnings of a socialist country. I want you to, to listen to this. I think I have this story pulled up here. Let's see here. America is back. Okay, now this is the title from the AP, okay? The AP, the Associated Press, which everybody used to think was like, you know, that's professional news. They're all, it's all, again, sorry to use this phrase again, bullshit. America is back. Biden pushes past Trump era with nominees. That's that's the title. America is back. But when you when you look at what it says, declaring America's back, President elect Joe Biden introduces his national security team on Tuesday. It says it's his first substantive offering of how he'll shift from Trump era America first policies by relying on experts from the Democrat establishment to be some of his most important advisors. Now, do you, does anybody else find that there's a conflict of interest in, in or conflict there uh, that it says he's saying America is back? Like I could just see Joe Biden is a weirdest looking liar. He, he's declaring, I mean, think about this. He's declaring America is back. But then he turns around and says he'll shift from America first policies. <laughs> This is, it's, it is just not even, it's so stupid. These people are stupid. They say stuff like that. Then he goes on and he says, together, these public servants, he's talking about these establishment. He's bragging, okay. He's bragging, he's yelling America's back. Then he's bragging that he's going to roll back the Trump era America first policies and, and that he's going to use Democrat establishment to do it, and then he says, together these public servants, public servants, my ass, will restore America globally, its global leadership, and its moral leadership. This is coming from Joe Biden, one of the biggest liars in politics, one of the biggest scam artists, artists in politics and government. He's... I mean, his one son died of cancer. His other son was a drug addict who ended up freaking making out and dating his other son's dead son's wife. Whose computer was found. He's smoking crack with prostitutes. And I mean, moral leadership. These are people during the Obama era that couldn't lead their themselves out of a paper bag. And morality crashed. Ethics crashed. Relationships between different groups of people with different colored skin all of a sudden crashed and became major issues. I'm black. I'm white. You turn on CNN. That's how they define each other. Everything that this era did in Obama era was to divide the country. Did nothing to unite the country. Nothing. 
and there was no moral and ethics and they're bringing them back. Some of these people are like the Clintons where they just never go away. They're always in government, poking around, popping up to these, these positions. John Kerry coming back again, going to be working on the environment because John Kerry fixed everything before, didn't he? Let's see what else. Again, when you go through these headlines, it's, it is like, it's like reading a newspaper from Poland when it was socialist. I mean, every headline, New York city checkpoints. That's what I just read. States impose new rules, plead with public. Don't leave your homes. Plead with public to stop the spread. Well, the, the public didn't start the spread to begin with. It was the government. It was state governors and mayors spread it like wildfire through the elderly clinics. LA, their governor or their mayor is telling people to stay at home, the stay at home orders and restrictions. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's just like in New York, terrible, restrictive, uh, uh, totally violating the con the, the constitution. Remember, I tell you all the time to watch turn it was incredible. I was last night, I was down in, uh, uh, Port Jefferson and it's right next to Setauket where the Setauket, you know, Patriots and the Setauket, uh, uh the, uh, the people that George Washington used as a spy ring, the culprit spy ring, it all happened right there. Uh, one of the women that was there is amazing. She's, I ought to have more, have her on here sometime talking about, um, actually she's, uh, in, uh, production for, uh, movies and documentaries, but she's studied I mean, she's grew up there. She, she studies it like crazy. And I'm like, where, where did this actually occur? She said, right here, this, this road right here that we're standing on is where this, where the, they went back and forth. It's all right here. And when you watch turn, the most important thing on there, which I keep telling people is the third amendment. You know, everybody knows about the first amendment speech, the second amendment arms, the third amendment. Why would they choose the third amendment and say no quartering in your home? Because they knew what we're finding out now. The government has no place in your home. As soon as they start pushing their way into your home, your freedoms are are doomed they're going to check to see if you have guns and take them away they're going to check this to make sure that your speech is okay they're going to tell you what you can eat pretty soon right now they're telling you how many people you can have in your house you're not even free to drive if it sounds like i'm a little bit disgusted i am because where i was yesterday in port jefferson the reason i was there is because one of the guys, and I'll talk about this more on a later show, I, I, it's been postponed right now again, but he had a, an, an arraignment for, because they gave a permit there for Black Lives Matter, this is this summer, to go and protest. And these people went and walked down the road and did all these things. And then the, a couple of these patriot groups got together and they, and they tried to get a permit and they denied it because of COVID. Three days after the BLM people were permitted to protest in mass. And these people wanted to do the same, but for a different reason to support Trump and freedom. And they were denied. They were denied a permit because of COVID. They did it anyway and they got cited. And we're talking, it's like $5,000 or $7,000. I can't remember exactly why, but it's ridiculous. I got to have the attorney on here and talk about it. This stuff is happening. I would say one other thing, you know, before I, this is going to be a shorter show tonight because it's a, I, I try not to repeat the, what I said the day before, and it's hard not to, it's hard not to come on here. I'm always very critical of a lot of these people who, who go around and do radio shows and it's the same show every day. But Zach Braff, who I got to be honest with you, I've, I've always, he's quirky, but I, I loved scrubs. If you know, he played one of the doctors. He's a main character on Scrubs. You know, I liked him as an actor until 
you know, he became demon possessed like all the rest of these Hollywood people. And he, he puts on here, him and that idiot that played Captain America both put these type of threatening type of tweets out there. He says, never forget all these enablers. He's talking about Trump people. And so I wrote, make sure you put me at the top of your list because I won't forget you made this threat. Hashtag fake doctor. Hashtag real seal. Look, if this stuff comes down to it, these people are going to lose. Possibly. If the Patriots get themselves right. But it's always, always, always astounding to me. I remember talking to Rick Unger, who I don't have anything to do with Rick Unger anymore. I don't care if I ever see Rick Unger again. He's a communist. He, I remember one time when I was on the radio with David Webb, and, uh, and Rick Unger was there with us, and a caller called in because Rick's liberal and said, Rick Unger is a communist. He got so mad because we didn't go back at the caller. He almost walked out. Now he's in support of all of these communist type of maneuvers by governors and all these politicians. And he's right there with this Zach Braff guy and all these other people. By the way, Zach Braff liked my comment that I made. What a smug little smart ass. Don't worry. Stuff goes down. It is never going to, it's not going to be pretty for them. But Rick Unger, you know, these people and Zach Braff and all these people, it's as if, as I always talk about, they're demon possessed. They're influenced. They say stupid stuff like that. And because they're left, they get away with it. And it's aggravating. <laughs> but I don't really care. I don't pay it any thought other than the fact that it's a threat and I wanted to point it out. You know, if it sounds like I'm mad, I am. I wouldn't be mad about what's happening in this country if it was just politics as usual. But it's not politics as usual. Why is everything, as I've talked about in several different podcasts, when you look at the totality of circumstances, which I've mentioned before, everything that is happening right now leads to suspicion or it leads to a picture of trickery. If it was just politics as usual, we'd be choosing between politicians who are bad leaders. But right now, we're choosing between freedom and socialism. And that has to stop. I'm Jonathan Gillum. This is The Experts. The truth has arrived. Rise up, everybody.